Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number seven and today going to try and squeeze in four games with St. Johnston, uh, Fulham, Newcastle, Brentford and Bristol City. That's the plan anyway, coming on the back of our first games with Scotland, a draw against Wales and a win over France. Before we play those games though, got something quite interesting, uh, our third youth scout report and let's see what Jack's got for us in his third month. So he hasn't been terrible so far. Uh, three players in total have gone into our academy. So let's see who we've got from our third one. Well, just as I say that, we get a guy with 63-39 potential. So not the best of starts. Reese McLean not looking as good either. This guy is quite good though. Aiden Taylor, 51-65 uh, overall, 72-92 potential and two months in that as well. So he'll get signed to our academy. Uh, this guy not terrible. This guy is terrible. Uh, not the best. Terrible. And it looks like We'll just get one from this report then. So, again, not the best from Jack, but it's not been terrible so far. Uh, three months in, four players in our academy. And Aiden Taylor is 54 overall to begin with as well. And not the best of stats, but again, only 17 years old, so plenty of room to grow. But for Barry Hamilton, I mean, I feel like promoting the guy right now. He's 17 years old, so he can be promoted. 58 overall. The problem is he probably wouldn't go into our first team straight away. So it's probably best to keep him in the academy for the time being. So we'll leave him here just for now, but... Uh, not before long, I think he will make his St. Johnson debut. And as we go into the first game of today's episode as well, we do indeed take on Fulham here in Perth. We haven't won since last month away at Molyneux against Wolves. So we desperately need to return to winning ways as we continue to slip down the table. So let's get a big three points here and win the first game of today's episode. It's been far too long since we tasted victory with St. Johnston. So on the back of that massive win with the Scots against France, this is time to get our first win with the club. So come on, the boys. Craig through towards Wotherspoon. Chance on the break here. Murray Davidson on the ball. Through the gap towards Kane. Kane on the ball. Hasn't scored in quite some time. Tries to feed it through towards McLean. He keeps on scoring. He can't stop scoring. And oh, he's hit a post for God's sake. I don't know whether you guys are the same, but I swear I hit the post in this year's FIFA more than any other. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know what's happened. Like, I really don't. We started off so well at the start of the season. We were just on fire. And since then, there's just there feels like there's just so much pressure as Christensen does the dog walk. I mean, for some reason, I just feel like every single game I go into, I'm going to lose and really, really badly. Tom Kearney with a free kick for Fulham, floats it into the middle, and it's not dealt with, and Callas is denied by a good save by John Ruddy. Inconsistent start for our new number one. Big save there by Big John. Easton on the ball, through the gap towards McLean. McLean through towards Kane. Come on, Kane, come on, Kane, come on, Kane. Great save by Jesse Yorinen. Is it Jesse Yorinen? I think it is. And Fulham escape. Great ball through towards Cawley. Woodrow goes through, and it's another great save by John Ruddy. Two big stops early. Well done. We've got to be careful here. Forced all the way backwards and McLean beats his man and finds Kane. And Kane is through surely to make it 1-0. What a save by the goalkeeper. But the referee has given us a penalty. And that is a real stroke of fortune. Fulham gave the ball away. And as Kane was through there, he took the shot. He made connection. The goalkeeper made the save. And I've got to say, it, you know, it is probably a penalty. You can see why the referee's given it. But it was a late call. And I'm surprised. But a penalty to St. Johnston. And when you're out of form and out of luck, you need a stroke of fortune. And here's a chance to take the lead here. Ten minutes after the restart. McLean will take it. And they're going to go to the top right. Come on, son. McLean, the top scorer. Oh, he just about finds the back of the net. It's 1-0 to St. Johnston. And my, oh, my, did we need that. The goalkeeper goes the right way from the spot kick, but he can't keep it out. It's a perfect penalty from McLean, and he has already got 11 goals in the championship right now. If it wasn't for him, I don't know what position we'd be in, but it wouldn't be in the playoffs. Fantastic finish from the spot, and it's 1-0 to the boys. It's Swanson through the gap towards Kane. Still about to go in quite some time. We don't mind if we win this game. Craig through towards Kieran Tierney. Down the left-hand side is Wolverspoon here. Wolverspoon on the ball. Takes it round one. Cross the far post. McLean's getting in. Oh, what a header by McLean. It's another one for our number nine. St. Johnston 2, Fulham nil. This guy is unplayable. The key to our success is keeping this guy fit. Stevie McLean leaping like a salmon and getting in for his 12th goal of the championship. This boy is just on fire. Stevie McLean is running the game. Stevie McLean is running the game. The boy your ball, Craig, in the air. Well done, son. Through towards Hunter off the bench. The adopted half-brother of Alex feeds it through towards Miller. Subs linking up here. He's inside the area. He's taken down. And it's our second spot kick of the game. No doubt about it. And a chance to wrap the points up here. 
Well, unfortunately, there's no McLean on the pitch to grab his hat-trick. He's been subbed off. So I'm going to give it to Kane, who desperately needs a goal. Hasn't scored in quite some time. And hopefully, he'll get his first in a while here. And he does as well. Chris Kane converts the spot kick. 3-0 to St. Johnston. And we'll get the three points. Well, we hadn't won for a month, and now we return to winning ways with a great performance. A 3-0 win over Fulham, McLean and Kane with the goals, and we're back to winning ways. Come on, the boys. Delighted with this win. I felt we did play better, and Ruddy as well, keeping a clean sheet. Couple of big saves for him in this one. Good to see. And man, the match to the boy up top, Stevie McLean, who is right now firing on all cylinders. Another couple goals here. He is just on fire. And moving swiftly on, our next game is also still here in Scotland against Newcastle United, who aren't playing too well in the game right now. 15th place in the table, so a good chance for back-to-back -back wins. Not much rest time between these two games, though, so we'll have to make some changes. But I'm fancying our chances of another three points here. Come on, St. Johnston. Come on, St. Johnston. One win in our last game. Let's get another one here. Here's Perez, great little ball through towards Adam Armstrong, he's running through one-on-one, -on -one. Ruddy comes out to meet him, but Armstrong has the finish on him, and Newcastle take the lead just before the half an hour mark. It was a brilliant through ball by Oza Perez, split the defence, well out came Ruddy to meet Armstrong, but he puts it through the legs of John Ruddy, Nats, and into the back of the net, great finish there by Adam Armstrong, his first goal in the championship, and we trail in the first half. Newcastle just on top right now. I can't get the ball off them at all. Sissoko inside the area. Tackle by Foster. Well done. And he gets the ball away. Well done. The boy at the back. Through the gap towards Hamilton as the subs link up down left-hand side here. Through the gap towards Hunter. Back out wide towards the 16-year-old. And away goes the ginger boy. Hamilton down his left-hand side. Has McLean in the area. I'll aim for it at the far post. That could go in. Oh, no. Well, this has been one hell of a frustrating game. We just have not been able to break Newcastle down in this one. And they still lead by one as we enter stoppage time now. It's been tough, but again, this is exactly what we knew was coming. You know, in a fixture congested league like the Championship, so many games coming thick and fast. With a poor squad and very little players and bad stamina as well. This was why this was going to be a tough challenge for us. And we're really feeling it now. And that's it then. Wow, terrible, terrible game. We lose by a goal. Could not create anything in this one. Newcastle shut the door on us and get the three points. We had six shots, apparently, but I don't remember them at all. Seriously, I can't remember creating anything clear-cut. Newcastle basically just built a brick wall around their penalty area, and I couldn't penetrate it. And man, the match will go to the Scott, actually. Grant Hanley with an 8.2. He was a rock at the back, just like he was against France, and helped Newcastle get the three points. And now it's time for Game 3 as well. Getting through this quite quickly today, a lot quicker than I expected. Uh, we take on Brentford for the third game of today's episode here, and also the only away game in today's episode out of the four. Uh, in a battle between two of the teams in the top six right now we are in fourth they are in sixth and we desperately need to return to winning ways you know our form has been so poor for quite some time really inconsistent we need to string together a few wins in a row so come on to Johnston let's get the three points and a massive victory here and if you'll remember, Brentford were the first side to beat us in this series as well. That came in the EFL Cup away in Perth. So looking for revenge in this game and hopefully going to get the three points. I'm sure we're capable of them. As Swanson takes it around one and the first chance could have come there. But instead, we got a player injured. So great start. Yep, referees pull back play and Swanson is injured. So I was thinking possibly a chance on the break. We could be through. Instead, Swanson's injured. He's forced off and the young man Rob Hamilton comes on. So great start. Not what we wanted to see. Chance here for Brentford as they storm forward. And it'll come towards Allen. Judge who goes for goal. Well saved, John Ruddy. Well, we created basically nothing against Newcastle. So hopefully in this game, we'll be a little bit more attack-minded and be able to score some goals. Murray Davidson on the ball. And he'll slide it inside towards McLean. Holds it up and finds Craig. Craig on the ball. Through the gap towards Wotherspoon. Chance to make it 1-0. Great save by Bentley. And Egan gets it clear. Easton through towards Hamilton as the second half starts here. Can we get the first chance of it straight away? Hamilton storming into the area. Great run by the 16-year-old, and it's a good save with a goalkeeper, but Kane will surely turn it in. No, what a block by Colin. Brilliant block, and he keeps Brentford on level terms. And now Kane on the ball through the gap towards McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, Stevie McLean. The boy off the post from McLean. Corner for Brentford and Josh McEachern will take it. Whips the ball into the middle and it's not fully dealt with. But now it is Easton covering the loose ball and storming down the right-hand side. And away he goes, Easton here. And Egan's trying to take it off him, but he can't. And Easton continues running down this right-hand side. What a run by Easton through the gap towards McLean. Uh, sorry, Wolverspoon even. I wish it was McLean, but Wolverspoon comes inside. Through the gap towards Kane, taken down, ref, ref, referee, where's the spot kick? I felt for sure that had to be a penalty there, he was taken down, 
And I felt for definite the referee was going to give us a spot kick. Still, Davidson through the gap towards McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, McLean. Go on, McLean. Referee that time, surely. Yes, get him. Penalty to St. Johnston. 20 minutes before the end. This time he gives a spot kick. And this time it's a definite one. He skips around Harley Dean, who was mad at the match the last time we took him on. And this time he's given away a penalty. McLean scored one in the first game of today's episode against Fulham. Can he score one here as well against Bentley? It's McLean who goes for goal and finds the back of the net. McLean puts us in front. A massive goal from our top scorer. Absolutely huge goal for us this one. McLean sends Bentley the wrong way, gives him the eyes and fires us in front. We needed to return to winning ways. We've turned to our top scorer and he's found the back of the net. 13 goals already in the championship. This guy has surely got to make my next Scotland squad. Josh McEachern tackled by Craig. Well done, son. Now McLean through towards Craig. Down this right-hand side. Tries to take it around McEachern and does. And plays it inside. And it's Hamilton towards McLean to make it two. Great save by Bentley. And Dean just about gets away with it. And there it is, 1-0 to the St. Johnston boys. We get the win, a massive victory for us. We return to winning ways, two in our last three. This is more like it. Just like the Fulham game, I felt we deserved the win as well. Brentford didn't play too badly, but I felt we were superior and deserved the three points. And I'll give man the match to Steven Anderson as well. Some pretty good defending in this game and helped us get the three points. 180! Oh, yeah, that's Gary Anderson, isn't it? Not Steven Anderson. Right then, boys, fourth game of the episode. We take on Bristol City here back in Scotland, coming on the back of that win against Brentford. Bristol City right now are... Where are they? 10th place right now in the table. So a chance to make it three wins from four games in today's episode. This will be a big win for us as well as we begin to get our form back and climb back up the table. So come on, St. Johnston. Let's get another victory here. Come on, the boys. Sutar to Easton, down the right-hand side, in towards Murray Davidson, through towards Craig, out wide is Wotherspoon, good little ball, Hunter's inside, he'll give it to him, and a good chance here, Hunter, back out wide towards Wotherspoon, who puts Little on the floor, Wotherspoon bears down on goal, gets himself inside and goes for goal, great save by Frankie Fielding, and it's cleared. Come on, throw to the boys here. Hunter will take it. Give it to McLean, his strike partner. In it goes to the far post where Craig is waiting. Oh, it's just off target. Easton's header finds Sutar and will pass out from the back. Still deadlocked at 0-0. Can we get the first chance of the half from our own half? Davidson to Craig. And what a ball by Craig. And what a first touch by Wotherspoon. And now we just need someone to get in the area to apply the finish. It might be Hunter, but it's more likely to be McLean on the volley. Ah. Oh. Of all players you want the ball to fall to in that situation, it was Stevie McLean, but he didn't make connection with the ball. Go on, Sutar. You're born the air, son. Well done. Can we get a chance later on to win the game? Wotherspoon through towards Murray Davidson on the ball. Back inside to Wotherspoon. Through the gap towards McLean. It's Kane to the right man. It's a good first touch. He gets himself inside. Great save by Fielding. Well, we've won ourselves a free kick here late on. And Luke Freeman can count himself lucky he's not walking. It was a really bad challenge. And a chance for us to win the game late on. Murray Davidson is stood over it. He's our best free kick taker, I think. No, Wotherspoon is actually. But I just, I don't know why I fancy Davidson was going to take this one. Come on, son. Murray Davidson in front of the home crowd. Can he pull one out of the bag? I mean, no. Oh, no, 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 no. One final chance for Bristol City here to win the game. Down the left-hand side. It'll come towards Odalda. Inside towards Freeman. Freeman on the ball. Crosses to the centre. Oh, what a save. What a save. John Ruddy, the boy. What a stop. I thought Bristol City were going to win it. And what a save. And this time, unlike against Newcastle, he doesn't spread his legs wide enough, just like my mum with a rich man, and makes a brilliant save. That went too far. That went way too far. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry, Mum. So, 0-0 the final score then here. And it's not a bad result, to be fair. But we should have got all three points. We had a hat full of chances. But in the end, just couldn't find that winning goal. Goalless draw, not really how I wanted to end today's episode off. But again, we'll take the point. We've got to look at the positives. It's one point gain, not two points dropped. And uh, we'll take it. And of course, John Ruddy making that big save late on as well. He's my man to match for three clean sheets in our last four games as well. He's picking his form up right now. And that's great to see. And that will end today's episode of Club and Country as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching the episode. I really do hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do leave a like. Likes are, of course, much appreciated. And they really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you all and have a great evening. I've got to go call my mum and apologize. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.